This week, work starts on the enormous project of restoring the Shea roof. We have a change of heart about a first floor ensuite. And our talented stonemasons make great progress on the chateau facades. Meanwhile, we set to work cleaning up the chateau park after recent storms. restoration of Pernon's magnificent Shea roof has begun and we could not be more excited that this building is now going to be saved. It has been a huge source of concern for us. So our local roofing artisans arrived this week. On Monday they set up the scaffolding and they have now started the restoration of the roof. And what that involves is first removing the existing terracotta tiles. They will clean those tiles and the tiles that are in good enough condition to save will then be put back on the roof. Areas where the roof has already collapsed, obviously the tiles are smashed and the wooden charpont, so the huge oak frame that supports the roof has been rotted away. The charpont will be restored, the lattices will be put down for the tiles to be laid and then the roof will go back on. And so our artisans are estimating this is a three week job. If this happens in three weeks, they deserve a medal because to me, it looks like they have a huge task ahead of them. And if you are unfamiliar with Pernon's Shea and would like to know more, I'll pop a link in the description below to a video that explains the history of the Shea, its role here in Pernon's domain and its current condition and the restoration project ahead. So very exciting progress here as another one of Pernon's incredibly vulnerable buildings will be saved for future generations. up here today actually actually it's always quite cold up here in winter but also you can see how humid it is with all the humidity on the windows it's very wet tasks today this is the door for the ensuite bathroom that they were currently working on and it needs a second coat of paint we're using farrow and ball lamp room gray and pavilion gray these two colours form a beautiful 18th century base for our colour palette around the chateau. And then we can start working on the wallpapers. But I've got a lot of painting to do first. Well, the great news is that the plumber and electrician has been and they have now done all the work that's needed to wire and plumb 
this ensuite. The bad news is that we were wanting to repurpose a cast iron claw foot bath that we found actually in the room behind here and we just haven't been able to make it work. When we put all the, the basin and the bath in, the toilet just feels really cramped and it seems like such a shame to have this beautiful space and have it feel really cramped. So we ordered a smaller bath and what that means is that this bath can actually fit in this niche here and it fits really beautifully. Previously, the toilet was in the corner here and we were using a basin on a pedestal that we found here at the chateau. And I was losing a lot of sleep over it because it would mean that the basin wasn't centered on this wall and so the mirror wouldn't be centered. And it just felt, just didn't feel right. So what I think we can do now, I've got a really stunning Louis the 16th piece of furniture and I think we can put a marble basin on the top that will look absolutely stunning. It will be a real feature of the room because now that we have all this space regained from where the bath was going to be here, this pedestal basin I think will just look a bit strange. They've removed all the lead pipes here. There's a large hole in the bottom corner that was dug out to make way for previous plumbing. Unfortunately, what they did was they cut through the boiserie and cut through the skirting boards. So these are oak, they're incredibly heavy and beautiful. And so there's a piece that we didn't use in the previous bathroom that had to come off. And so I think I can use this to repair the skirting boards in the corner. I think this is really good progress and I'm quite excited about this new layout. It feels feels much more spacious and I think it's going to be really beautiful with the beautiful Louis XVI piece of furniture and the marble basin, so things always change. pieces of skirting board from the reclaimed skirting board and they will replace that gap that there was in the skirting boards in the ensuite but they had lots of lead paint on them and it was all chipping and very uneven so I've used smart strip to remove the lead paint so we can go back to having no paint and then we'll paint them but this is interesting actually. So you can see here, it's taken the paint off and it's taken us right back to the original paint color, which is black. So all the skirting boards in the chateau were originally black. That was the 18th century color palette. Those beautiful grays and then these lovely strong black skirting boards, which is exactly the same that we're doing as we're restoring the chateau. And after I clean this piece up, oh, there's a nail there. What I will actually do is give them a wash and then also give them a pH treatment because after the smart strip, we need to adjust the pH levels. Oh, it just comes off so easily. It's really the most incredible product. Anything that removes lead paint makes me really happy. back to the 18th century so I can show you the pH level which we would expect to be quite high after having the smart strip applied then we will use a neutralizer to bring the pH level back down. It's been 48 hours since we stripped the lead paint off the replacement skirting boards or the repurposed skirting boards for the ensuite and so they dried and then it's been, now been 24 hours since we did the pH neutralizer. And so what we did is we used the neutralizing product, we sprayed the surface and then waited 24 hours until it's now dry. And so remember the pH level was incredibly high. It was right up around the top of the chart. So it sat up about 12. And so we'll see what it is now. The reason that we need to neutralize the pH after Treating it with smart strips is that a high pH will not be good for the paint to adhere to. Yeah, that's perfect. So now it's 
sitting around seven, eight, which is absolutely perfect. And it's really exciting to see these skirting boards back in their original colour that they were meant to be, looking straight back at the 18th century colour. We always love a, an 18th century discovery here at the Chateau. C'est le show avec l'eau Ouais, c'est en fait, si on fait un, ce qu'on appelle là, je fais ce qu'on appelle un coulinage. Donc en fait, si tu veux, j'insère de la chaux pure mélangée avec de l'eau. Donc après, j'y ai, ai mis un fond de sable dans le fond, histoire d'avoir quand même un peu de grain, histoire que ce soit bien dur quand ça va sécher. Et en fait, ça me permet, en fait, si tu veux, de faire des, les joints les plus, les, les plus petits. C'est-à-dire mm -hmm. que quand on a des gros joints, on met du mortier directement. Et quand on a des tout petits joints comme ça, pour être sûr que la pierre, elle soit scellée et qu'elle soit fichée, en fait, bah du coup, en fait, on insère de la chaux mmh. liquide avec un, un petit peu de ça. Ça prend combien de temps de sécher euh, là, là, du coup, en général, en, en général ça, dépend, ça dépend vraiment du, du temps et de la température. Mais bon, il faut compter pour que ce soit vraiment sec, on va dire à cœur. Donc en plein milieu, si tu veux, il faut compter trois semaines à peu près. D'accord, ok. Et après, tu vois... Le problème, par exemple, tu vois, par exemple, la, la seule contrainte qu'on a, c'est qu'en fait, vu qu'on est sur de la chaux pure, enfin, non, pure, avec un tout petit peu de sable, et que du coup, on, est, on travaille là, ici, du coup, actuellement, sur, sur le château, en fait, on travaille le tuffeau, mm -hmm. donc il y a une pierre très, très euh, c'est une des pierres les plus tendres qu'on a, euh, qu'on a, bah, du coup, en fait, du fait qu'elle soit tendre, en fait, elle boit énormément d'eau. C'est oui. pour ça, du coup, que j'ai mouillé au préalable, pour m'assurer que, du coup, ça, ça descende bien. J'enfonce vraiment bien, du coup, ma chaux dans mon joint. Pour que ça descende vraiment le plus bas possible. Tu vois Et en fait, ça me permet, regarde, tu vois, as, quand j'appuie, tu as, as plein de petites pulls de, bulles d'air qui ressortent. Tu vois Là, quand j'appuie. Là, tu vois, tu as ah plein oui, de petites bulles d'air. Et donc, du coup, c'est super important de faire ça. Comme ça, en fait, on chasse l'air et on remplit vraiment bien le joint, du coup, avec, euh, avec notre chaud. D'accord. Voilà. Donc, après, évidemment, après, on nettoie, on nettoie la pierre. Et après, comme tu peux voir, après, il va y avoir des petites reprises. Euh, au niveau de la taille de pierre. Super, merci Mathieu. Ouais. <rire> Avec plaisir. storms this winter and we've been very busy with other things and haven't had a chance to clean up the Chateau Park and here you can see we've lost an enormous oak tree during one of the storms. We had lots of storms with really high winds and so it's always really sad when we lose a big old tree like this one but the good news for us now is that with our biomass heating system this tree will make its way eventually to help heat the Chateau and the rest of it will we'll use uh, as wood chip in the garden. So Tim's got a big task ahead of him today.
And don't forget, if you'd like to follow the restoration of Pernor more closely, we post a daily update in our Instagram stories. If you'd like to support the restoration project here at Pernor, we post an exclusive weekly video over on Patreon. Otherwise, just hit the subscribe button and we'll keep you updated here.